Good morning. It's Fridays with Father, and it's December the 3rd. The year's gone, isn't it? The year's over. We shouldn't say that, of course, because we still have some of the most important days are yet to come. You know, as we journey through Advent, through to Christmas, uh, we have special times ahead. But uh, time is going fast, and it does feel like suddenly the year is, is out, as they say. Um, anyway, I'm here today with you. It's uh, kind of a gloomy Friday, not particularly cold. Jonah's asleep on the floor, and uh, today is a feast day. It's a feast of St. Francis Xavier. Yes, a Jesuit, but he was a man from Spain in the 17th century, I want to say, and um, of noble family and what have you, who um, eventually became a priest and then under the influence of St. Ignatius of Loyola, became a Jesuit. And um, he ended up um, going to work in India. Um, he was sent there as like a delegate from the Pope or something. And, um, and it was a colony at the time, you see, India of Portugal. And I guess he was there and he was struck by how badly the Portuguese uh, col uh, colonists, if you like, um, were behaving, how they kind of basically took advantage or trashed the, the country. Uh, and so he decided that he should give a better example. So he started to work with the poor and the sick in, uh, in Goa. And it was just through that witness, I suppose, to, to love and care and service that, you know, he won souls for God and converted these people in India to Jesus and they became they became Catholic and, and Goa to this day is a very Catholic part of India uh, and from there he went on to do the same in um, in Japan and in China uh, and then he died of a fever on a boat and um, so I don't think he was that old he might have been like about 40 or something when he died um, but he did a lot in that short time, and it was mainly through his example, you know? Example teaches. Uh, example wins hearts for Jesus, and so uh, that's why we honor St. Uh, Francis Xavier today, uh, uh, a Jesuit uh, from Spain. So, and I think, I might be wrong, that probably the people in Goa uh, do have quite a strong devotion to St. Francis Xavier. I might be wrong, but I think they do. Anyway, that's today's feast day, but we continue to journey through Advent. Um, the first week of Advent is almost gone. Uh, last year I talked to you about uh, Advent calendars. Growing up with Advent calendars was always like an important part of Advent for me. Uh, and this year I was given an Advent calendar, which is kind of combines the notion of a, a calendar and an Advent wreath. Uh, a friend of mine sent me this here, which is uh, like a a candle version of an advent calendar. It's made by Yankee Candle. And so uh, every day you open a little door and inside there's a tea light. And the tea light has a different smell. So you, you, know, you mark the days of advent by a different candle with a different smell. Of course, I have three of my candles burning brightly and my office suddenly smells rather beautiful. So. Thanks to my friend for giving me such a kind gift. Um, uh, it's an, a different idea in terms of like an Advent calendar, but it's a way of like counting down the days until we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Talking about the birth of Jesus Christ and all things Christmas, because now that's in our radar, whether, whether you try to uh, avoid it or, or whatever. Um, but it's, it's everywhere you go, right? It's in the stores and it's on the internet and people are doing festive things all, already, really, which is fine. Um, I was aware by a post on Facebook uh, where somebody in the Schomburg area was asking, does anybody know a good bakery in the area that makes fruitcake, good fruitcake? And, and the person said, I know fruitcake is a bit of a joke, but um, I'm fond of it. Uh, and so I didn't reply to it, um, but I wanted to say, well, I like fruitcake as well. Um, but I also know it's a bit of a joke here in the United States that, you know, because a lot of people just don't care for it. Now, um, 
growing up in Great Britain, you know, uh, fruitcake is in some ways part of like uh, our culture over there. Not just at Christmas, but fruitcake in general. Uh, a slice of fruitcake with a cup of tea is quite a nice thing. And it's a cake which is like, if you like, it's like a pound cake which is, includes dried fruits inside. And um, particularly at Christmas time, um, a fruit cake can be a big kind of family activity in the same way that tamales can be a big family activity for people in Mexico or California, you know. But uh, making the Christmas fruit cake or the, and the Christmas puddings and things like that is very much a festive thing to do. So I grew up with uh, fruit cake and, and I like it, you know. Now, the fruit cake in this country is slightly different. It's slightly denser, I would say. Um, uh, less flour in it, I think, really. But uh, when I've had it, I, I quite like it. And um, now, please, I, I'm not asking anybody to bring me fruit cake. No, I don't need fruit cake, but I like it. But I was kind of tickled by this person who was asking about, is there a bakery? In, in the area of Schomburg that sells good fruit cake. Uh, if, you if you know any, let me know because I'd be interested to know as well. But, um, but anyway, uh, fruit cake, a friend of mine uh, was making uh, his fruit cake for Christmas uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And he sent me pictures of the fruit that he'd been using, you know, he'd been preparing to use to make his uh, Christmas fruit cake. And, um, and as I say, the fruit that we use in fruit cake is dried fruit, generally, like, you know, currants, sultanas, raisins, you know, and then some nuts and that kind of thing. But my friend, he'd had the fruit, like all of this dried fruit, soaking, right, in brandy for three months. So three months ago, he got a jar and he filled it with fruit and then he filled it with a bottle of brandy and he's just, it's just been there soaking for three months so that when he makes the fruit cake, it'll be extra rich. Uh, and I wish I could be there to enjoy a slice with him. Um, there's an interesting uh, thing, custom in the north of England. Um, I think it's just the north of England, I think, it, but maybe elsewhere. But they, when they have their piece of fruit cake, you know, at Christmas, they put on top of it a slice of cheese. Uh, and, and I've tried it once, and it's nice, kind of like a cheddar cheese. I mean, or they would probably use Cheshire cheese, which is kind of slightly um, um, crumbly and not sour as much, but you know, mild, a mild cheese. And, um, and you would eat it together. And what the cheese does is it like it cuts the sweetness or the richness of the fruitcake. So, um, I'm not saying you should try it, but you know, if you do have fruit cake there and you think, oh, this is a bit sweet, you know, you could like put a slice of cheddar on top of it and eat it together. And you will find that it's not a bad thing. As I say, that comes from the north of England. I think it's a Lancashire and a Yorkshire thing. But um, anyway, for what it's worth, that's uh, fruit cake. Moving on, because we need to move on. I could talk about sweets and food forever, but. That, you know, that only fills my belly, right? We need to fill our soul. Um, so let's talk about something like that. And let's talk about um, novenas, novenas. Today, we begin our novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yes, on December 12th is the big feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is obviously a big thing um, for people in Mexico and Latin Americans in general, but also to lots of Catholics worldwide. You know, um, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. She's right behind me there on the wall, and we have her picture in our church. But um, it's common to have a novena in her honor. Nine days of prayer leading up to the feast. Um, that is a common Catholic practice, um, really, and has been for many, many centuries. Um, what is the origin of a novena? It's really quite hard to know. I think that maybe it goes back, though, to way back to New Testament times and the book of the Acts of the Apostles, when they're told, the, apost the apostles, to, to pray and to pray constantly for the coming of the Spirit. 
And so they did that. They gathered together and they prayed constantly for the coming of the Spirit. And then, nine days later, the Holy Spirit came and Pentecost. And that is one theory about how novenas came into the practice of, um, of Catholicism, you know. Um, and then I think in the early church, it was common to have like um, nine days of prayer for somebody who was deceased. That's still quite common in, in Mexico, for example, that after somebody dies, you pray for nine days. So that's like after it. Uh, and then it kind of just developed, I think, um, big feasts, uh, you know, the, the people would have a novena of prayer uh, for the Feast of Pentecost, for example, people would do a novena. And it's a bit like a spiritual exercise, um, really, of preparing yourself, of praying for graces, getting yourself in good shape to celebrate. Um, another form of novena is um, to make a novena of prayer when you are in need. Um, you have a specific spiritual need, and so you pray for nine days specifically in the hope that you will receive that grace. Novenas sort of slightly fell out of favor um, by some, in some people's eyes during the time of Vatican II when they wanted us to focus more centrally on, on the liturgy itself and, and the celebration of Eucharist. But novenas are still very much part of Catholic tradition and uh, Catholic culture. And so we're having one here uh, at Church of the Holy Spirit, and it starts tonight. So we're full on, you know, with our spiritual exercises. If you like, think about it as if like this. You know, like people do like crash diets. And so like they, for like 10 days, all they'll eat is like cabbage soup in order to like lose 10 pounds or something like that. Well, a novena is, you know, is, an, <laughs> is like a spiritual version of a, cash, a crash diet. But you don't do it in order to lose something. You do it in order to gain something. So novenas, they come generally with specific prayers that you must say every day or specific practices that you would do every day. Uh, in order to to gain the spiritual enlightenment uh, enlightenment or grace or blessing okay so think of it in that way it's a bit of a spiritual workout and here at the church of the holy spirit beginning this evening um we're going to have uh, there'll be the prayer of the rosary uh, followed by mass and then there will be sort of like the essential mexican thing which is a bit of a social which will include uh sweet bread sweet rolls and mexican hot chocolate so it, and it's really nice. It's a nice thing to do. And we'll be doing that for like um, nine days. Now, we'll be doing it all in Spanish this year. This is my first year here doing it. So, um, and I know that in the past years, we've always done some form of a novena here. Um, but uh, we're doing it slightly differently this year because it includes mass. So I'll be celebrating mass every day. Um, and we'll be doing it in Spanish. I'm hopeful that maybe next year, for those who are interested, we can incorporate uh, sort of, uh, you know, both languages, depending what the interest is. But what I would say to you is this, you know, um, it's quite a nice experience, the whole thing around Guadalupe, and it's really just good to see people's faith kind of like um, expressed, you know, during the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So, on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is the 12th of December, and it's a Sunday this year, okay, um, at five o'clock in the morning, um, our church will be full of people and they will come to serenade our Blessed Mother. That's all they do. They come to serenade and to pray. And it's a very simple thing. And, um, uh, and this year we're doing it uh, at five o'clock in the morning and we're doing it with, wait for it, mariachi. Yes, my favorite. Mariachi are coming to, to sing to our Blessed Mother. And you can come along and be part of that. And it, I say you haven't got to do anything, and it's, it, but the, the songs will be sung in Spanish, but it's just a very lovely thing to see and just to be a part of. Even it, and, you know, it'll go on for about 45 minutes or so. Um, but, you know, you can stay for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, or stay for the whole thing. But it's just fascinating just to be part of, uh, you know, that kind of faith experience. And so I recommend it. Uh, and it's called Las Mañanitas, you know, that kind of moment where you serenade, Las Mañanitas, and uh, we're having it here at five o'clock in the morning with mariachi, and then it'll be followed by, by a brief mass, 
and then it'll be followed by at five o'clock in the morning you know hot chocolate and you know sweet bread or whatever is available we've got people lined up to to do all of that so it'll be a great demonstration of faith and you're welcome to join us so um got a lot happening at the moment and uh and i'm just delighted to be a part of it you know i think this is the fun bit i do get tired and so i do have to like go and lock myself in my room just to like recover but i do i like all of this this is fun and so it's just a great way of building up to christmas and a great kind of advent experience um there's just one more thing i want to mention today and that's our jubilee activity this weekend yes it's bring a guest to mass now, a couple of weeks ago, you were invited to do just that, and I'm here today to remind you about it. Um, you know, we've been celebrating, you know, each month, in some ways, different dimensions or different aspects of our life here at Church of the Holy Spirit, and to celebrate it and share it. So, you know, we, um, we had the, the initial uh, kickoff event, which celebrated the history and tradition, you know, when we had all the, the previous pastors and and which was wonderful, you know, really to learn about the history of the place. Uh, and then in October, we had the, the, the Rosas Baile, the dinner dance, which celebrated like the, the Hispanic dimension to our parish. Uh, and then last month, we had the pizza with the pastor, which I suppose, I don't know what that really celebrated, but it kind of like got you to look at me a bit and find out some stuff about me you didn't know. And that was also fun. Uh, and this time now in December, you know, we're focusing on those people out there on the, I say the fringes, there's no real fringes in parish life, but, but people that we maybe haven't seen here for a long time, um, you know, people um, who've kind of gotten lost in the, in, the, in, the, in the froth, if you like, but people who are very much part of us. Uh, and so we're, we're inviting you to bring someone, you know, maybe someone someone who's not been here in a long time and that could be your children it could be your aunts your uncles you know it can be your parents but you know people that just you know for one reason or other they just kind of drifted a bit but they are still part of us and so we're celebrating them this weekend and we'd like you to bring them to us and um and it's just basically bring them to mass there's going to be no you know kind of you know big deal uh, you know it's not really any drama they haven't got to stand up and, you know, say anything or do anything. They'll be welcomed. And, and then after Mass, there will be, uh, you know, just a small kind of social, uh, you know, coffee and donuts kind of thing. But just a way of honoring them, celebrating them, and welcoming them, welcoming them back um, to us. We're not, you know, passing out envelopes. We're not, you know, sort of <laughs> getting them to sign their names in blood to sort of, you know, to be there next week. We just would just like them to come to Mass, and we'd like you to do that. So if you know someone, you know, have you got someone, a spare person there in your house who uh, hasn't come to Mass with you in a long time, or who's never been even for that matter, bring them along. We'd love to have them because um, we're trying to, you know, open our doors, you know. Welcome in the spirit, welcome in the people, uh, welcome the world, you know. So uh, that's what's happening here at Church of the Holy Spirit. As you can imagine, we're quite busy. Um, so in spite of all the, you know, the dark stuff, you know, and all the, uh, and all the trials and, the, you know, and the, the, the ongoing stress of COVID virus, coronavirus, um, we're still trying to sort of be upbeat here and be joyful and just to get on with our faith life because you know Jesus is still here and we still have faith and it just doesn't stop just because something happens you know uh, we continue along the road with Jesus and we want you to be with us too so I hope you can join us this coming weekend for mass and bring a guest if you can okay um, that's it for now I've got lots of stuff to do so I will love you and leave you uh, be joyful keep the faith take care